Life is business therapy, healing businesses from the inside out through communication and emotional intelligence. I'm Diane Di Hansen, management consultant, with me co-host Christine Salvo, therapist, certified mediator, and certified hypnotherapist. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Good morning, everybody. And today on the show, we have Renee Barabo, the practical shaman. She is a Nautilus Gold Award winning bestselling Hay House author, and she has written Winds of Spirit, Ancient Wisdom Tools for Navigating Relationships, Health, and the Divine. Renee is an inspirational speaker, entrepreneur, soul coach, and workshop leader, known and respected for her down-to-earth approach. Her work has been featured on the Shift Network, Omega Institute, C4 Addiction Conferences, and Religion and Society. Since 2013, Renee has worked in the field of mental health and addiction treatment at Renewal Behavioral Health and Foundations Recovery Network, a system of residential treatment facilities. In her work with clients, she has witnessed that most people have lost their faith and need a way back toward ritual and ceremony welcome to the show renee it's nice to be here with you and good morning everyone hope you're having a wonderful start to your day yeah so even just listening to your bio i'm like i completely agree (laughs) (laughs) i can't i can't wait to kind of to dig my teeth into this a little bit so where where shall we even start well, I think what's interesting is um, is your approach toward healing and health, and that's through tapping into nature. How did you how did you discover your approach? What is what does your path look like? Oh, my path, the path. My first inclination that I, I really that I call it my first spiritual experience was I had um, I, I started having these things come that happen, and then. I opened a restaurant. I was 30 years old. And the day after my grand opening, my father went home and had a massive stroke. And at the time I was still using uh, drugs. I was pretty depressed. And all of a sudden it dawned on me one night that I didn't want to die at 52. And so I started to to seek out some spiritual solutions to the, the chronic depression and all of that. And I found myself in the woods in Norwalk, New York one night Uh, on a fire walk with a nun. And the, it was in that moment that I realized that the perception of reality that we have didn't align to the fact that I could walk on hot coals and not burn my feet. And, and so there, there began the quest of magic and understanding more like, what, how does that happen? What do we do? And from there, I then went, I got to California by the way of New Mexico and I ended up in a, in a Nipi lodge for 10 years, uh, you know, carrying blankets and, and um, praying in, in the sweat lodge. And I did a vision quest on the mountain. And then I found my way to Peru, where there was a lot more acceptance of this multidisciplinary approach than there were in some of the more um, traditional traditions. And there was, there, was, there, there was I, and it always seemed to be that I was either hiking a mountain you know, the first time I went into that Anipi Lodge and I crawled in on, on my, my hands and knees onto the dirt, um, the earth, and I felt a sacredness there that I had never really found when I was sitting in the pews of a church or anywhere else for that matter. And I thought, hmm, there's something here for me. Mm-hmm. I've I've definitely done some sweat lodges and wow, they're powerful, powerful, powerful. In my experiences, um, they've really made me meet myself, you know, wherever I was, whatever, what was happening. And I love the doors, you know, the four doors and each direction and everything that that has to offer and all of the um, kind of up and down and all around of those experiences. So I can't, I've done probably a handful in my lifetime. I cannot imagine spending years doing that and how powerful that must have been. It really was. And in fact, you know, i just to me, I said I was like walking in natural and the heat never bothered me. But then I brought one of my friends once and and she crawled out under the flap under the first round and I heard her car going down the dirt road. <laughs> and she said to me something that was very interesting. She said, and you think that in the, the Christian traditions that, you know, that the, the suffering and the penance and all of that, she goes, and you, yet you'll sit in that 130 degree, you know, lodge and, and not feel that you're suffering. <laughs> I guess it was like there was an affinity to that for me. Absolutely. I've uh, done sweat lodges as well. And it's it's funny, when I did my first sweat lodge, I had no idea what it was. You know, I kind of imagined like, 
okay, a sweat lodge. So we're all sitting in a sauna and we're talking about, you know, spiritual stuff, right? Sweat, we're just sweating like that. No, 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 no. It's totally intense and totally uh, immersive with the drums and with, with everything that is happening. Um, so I'm for our listeners who, I mean, we are just speaking another language right now, um, you know, kind of, you know, think about it from, from a perspective of someone maybe who, who doesn't really know how to utilize spirituality to, um, to develop that, that guiding light, that guidepost when decisions get tough. Um, what would you tell someone who's just an absolute and complete beginner, who's listening to the first five minutes of this program and going, I don't even know one word they're saying, are they speaking Japanese? Yes. You know, generally what brings us to our spirituality is when we're on our knees begging for one more of this or one more of that. And so and it was no different for me. It was like my life was unmanageable and and I was seeking a solution that was bigger than myself that I, I ended up at the lodge. The fact that I like the lodge, and let me tell you what the lodge is for those of you who don't know, it's it's made out of willow that one that the group collects and it's woven together in a certain pattern and then it's covered with either tarps or blankets and it's it's dark in there and in the center of the the dome is a a star-shaped hole that's covered with blankets but in the tradition it's believed that our prayers go up through the center to spirit and what's happened in in modern day traditions, you know, maybe the last 12,500 years is that uh, we move from the inside, we move from the outside in into the inside. And we believed that we needed an intermediary to to deliver our prayers to spirit. But in this sacred Anipi Lodge, you learn to pray. Um, and praying is, is a very profound uh, art form. And, and I didn't know how to pray. I had lost my way of prayer. And, you know, if, you, if you've if you lost your way from prayer, they say that the simplest prayer is the one of gratitude to say thank you every day. And, but for me, I was a little more hard headed. I had to learn a lot of other spiritual tools like showing up in a community, being, putting the blankets on and putting them away without getting resentful. So there's like every spiritual tradition teaches you basic practical tools for getting along better in the world. So if you're home and you're a little bit depressed or your business isn't going the way you want it, start with making a gratitude list. And and that's what the Anipi is all about is it's saying our prayers of thank thank you to the creator. And we that goes a long, long way. Does that answer that a little bit? It does. Um it's it's interesting how um spirituality can be used as a a tool for you know better self knowing and connection to something something greater than yourself and i think you know especially in the context of our listeners who are mostly you know driving to work or and their employees or their business owners or whatever um they um I think what I'm really looking for is some way to, you know, kind of open up that, that spiritual pathway for, for somebody who, you know, may know, they may know religion, they may know um, what they were brought up with, but maybe a listener who's, who's seeking, who doesn't quite know where to start. Well, I would start with a wind walk because I think we are so totally disconnected from nature that we forgot that all that we are nature, first of all, and that every answer we seek can be found on a, on a walk. And a wind walk, for those of you who are on your way, you might not want to do it now, but when you, you have a lunch break, it's where you have a question that you're trying to answer. And you don't really know where to turn with it. One of the things that I suggest is to go outside and take a wind walk. And when you take a wind walk, you go to the door and this is one thing you can't do sitting at your computer. You could go out on your patio and, and kind of do a wind experience, but you go outside, you ask the wind that pressing question. And it might even be like, start out simple because, you know, what should I have for dinner? And then you wait until you feel the wind kiss your cheek or your body. And then you 
start to walk and you put that aside because one of the things that we do when we want to manifest something is often we can um, focus on it too much and we squeeze the life out of it instead of that spirit might have this or something better for us. And maybe there's a, a new thing you've thought about that you didn't even know you were thinking about and the wind will answer your questions. I mean, it's just really, it's really profound and really simple. Yeah, that's, that's so perfect. And on another, on another level, like I love that you're incorporating the spirit part. Um, I'm really looking at this other part where the neurological part, right? So anytime we're moving both parts of our body simultaneously, like going for a walk, we're actually doing a self-soothing technique for the brain because it uses, it accesses both parts of the brain and it has a naturally calming effect. So, so it's so funny when you say it's like, Yes, we're disconnected with nature, but there is also neuroscience involved in this too, where it's like, hey, when you move your body in a specific way, when you're out breathing fresh air, when you're not distracted by your screens or things like that, answers come to you. And it's a, it's one of the most natural things in the world, but we can also see it under MRIs. We can also uh, see the benefits scientifically. So I, that's one of the things I love about being alive at this time is it's, spirit plus science uh, coming together, really working together probably for the first time, right? Where we're able to go, wow, there, there's absolute statistical evidence, right? Or, or visual evidence that this is changing my brain. And by changing my brain, I'm changing my experience of life. Absolutely. In fact, there's been a study done that there's three levels of nature that you want to experience. So Say one of them is like a direct experience, like I just was talking about going out for the wind walk. But say you can't necessarily go out for the wind walk because, you know, you're in a high rise or apartment or, you know, at work. You can, there's benefits to having pictures of nature surrounding you. And if you're designing your campus because you've got, you know, more than one office and you're the, having people walk between buildings or between uh, going from indoors to outdoors also has a, a beneficial effect too. Or that if you're um, sitting in a, with a client, having those window shades open so that they can see nature has also good beneficial effects. So a lot of times in my Facebook, I, I don't go anywhere that's controversial. Just That's just not my my personal persona. But I share pictures of nature all the time because I feel like that's putting positivity out into the world. I love that. And I usually, I surround myself with plants. Um, my offices always have tons of plants in them so that there, there is that feel, right? And I love that you mentioned pictures. I actually hadn't thought of that. Um, so any way that you can connect to nature is the way that you're going to help reset that central nervous system, right? It's the way that you're going to connect to that most natural part of ourselves that often our modern world has disconnected us from. So some ways that, you know, um, so this is a, a business therapy show, right? So we're looking at the, the mind, but we're also looking at the way we spend our time productively, right? In the world through work or entrepreneurship or um, managing or, or whatever that looks like. So using the concepts that you've learned along the way, Renee, how would you kind of marry the two? How would you use what you know as your spiritual practices and your own personal journey to help with the workplace, to help with the time we're spending at work? Well, first of all, the more you do your personal work and the clearer you get, you're going to manifest a work environment that works better for you. For example, today I was, I was doing work that I loved. I was creating a video for work, but I was creating it from Whidbey Island, Washington. And the company I work for is in Southern California. And, and I also, when I was I've created a, a situation for myself at work where I can work from wherever I want in the world. And that's, that's one of the great things that has happened in the last year with the, with the COVID experience is that people learned that they could work from anywhere and companies realized that, wow, you give somebody a nice view out their window of the passage, I get just as much work done and probably they're not wasting nearly half the time, you know, visiting between offices. And my friends joke about it because when, I was writing Winds of Spirit. I needed to come up to the island to write. And I went to my boss one day and I said to her, you know, I really need some time to, to write. And because I had manifested 
that I was aligned to what my truth was, not what selfishly I needed, but this was my truth. I had a book to write. And she goes, well, let's hold that vision. Sure enough, within a month, we were holding the vision. And it just turned out that she took a new job. And the guy who was replacing her thought I was a little, you know, too out there with my wind work. And so he said, I think we're going to move you off site and you can work from home. So as soon as I could work from home, I booked a plane ticket up to Washington and I was working from home up here. And then, you know, I'd go back and forth. So the, the point of the story is, is that when you get really clear and you're really aligned to your spiritual path, the doors open. Sometimes the doors close in your face because you need to do that spiritual work and, and turn into a different direction. But the more clear you are about what you need and what you, you know, are willing to do to have your needs met, the more the opportunities will align to your higher purpose. And, and that goes in, like I teach, I, I'm getting ready to teach a 10 month wind mastery program. And five years ago, I wasn't aligned or ready to teach a 10 month program. So the students didn't come this year, you know, and I was doing all the promotions, I was doing everything, but this year my assistants interviewing people and the students are just coming. So we have 30 people in the, the, the work. I haven't gotten on one Facebook Live to promote it or sent out a 100 emails because when you're aligned, the community supports that alignment. And then you're going to get more personal work to do. You're going to have to look at what your needs are and you're going to have to take the action. But those are that four doors of the Anibi we were speaking about earlier is that, you know, all of a sudden your mind, your your emotions, your physical and your spiritual are all aligned and and it life starts to work for you. So there's a couple of things you said that I, I don't want to let pass by. Um, one, we were talking about imagery and nature imagery, and there's a couple of different ways that that can be achieved in the working environment. So there can be you know, pictures, of course, on the wall of nature, but also um, you can have a Himalayan um, salt rock, a salt, salt lamp of some sort. You can have a mini water fountain. Um, there's a, a number of things that can be achieved in terms of nature scents with essential oils. So really getting creative especially if you if it's cold and you can't get outside i know we're you know about to get a snowstorm here so outside may not be as accessible but the the visions and the feelings of outside may be accessible um, to to provide that that grounding effect i know for myself um in my home i have big picture windows that face the mountain and I, I literally don't want to leave uh, the side of the house that has the beautiful mountain view because it does inspire me toward greater grounding, greater productivity, um, better creativity, inspiration, things of that sort. So um, you had mentioned just briefly um, pictures and, and things like that. So um, I wanted to know, like in, in your experience, you know, what are some of the what are some of the effects that um, imbuing nature into a indoor environment, um, like an office space, um, could have um, for the um, the vibe of the workforce. Absolutely, the vibe of the workforce is is essential. And first of all, you know, when there's an issue in the workforce, you really always have to take that personal inventory to see, you know, what what issue you're having with the workforce, so that you you can. You know, I say like, stay there until you want to be there and then you can leave. But in terms of, of creating that, it brings more peace to everyone when you start to incorporate, you know, your spiritual practices and like you can even light a candle at your desk, make sure that it's one of those really good unscented ones, because a lot of people are, are very sensitive to those. But another thing that you can do at your work, if there's like been an argument with your boss or something make sure you have some either sage spray so that you can, you know, spray and, and bring yourself back to, to center. And then you'll find when you have that sacred spot in your own office and, you know, you can even have an altar. An altar could be uh, a place where you look over and you might have some figurines or some rocks or some flowers, you know, that, that are the places that you can like put that stress because work, work environments can be very stressful so when you um, put those together, then all of a sudden you you have a, a nice peaceful place and then you know like, oh, I'm feeling a lot of sorts. Oh, I go pick up a rock off my altar and, you know, hold it and breathe into it and recenter yourself. 
because it's up to us to make sure that our environments are that way. And, and that's no different anywhere. Your home, do you have sacred spots in your home? And a lot of us are working from home right now. So creating, this is what I do at working from home. And for, for so many of you, I have a workspace and I have a space that's not a workspace. So when it's time to come to work, you know, it's easy to sit there if you're working from home with your computer on on your lap in bed. But no, I actually change spaces into this is my workspace. And whatever that ritual looks like for you to do that, it's important. But But make a distinction between work and not work. Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm, as you're talking, I'm like, oh my God, has she been to my office or my house? <laughs> so at my at home office, I do have an altar within my uh, eyesight with uh, all sorts of good stuff on it. I'm actually, you reminded me to just grab my little selenite egg that's on my desk that I am often messing around with throughout the day as I'm listening and to hold and carry that stress. And in my, in my true office, uh, it is set up very similarly. So I love that we are both in alignment on that and we can see the importance of setting up our space that way, of clearing that energy, of having places to channel when it gets dense, right? When our energy gets too dense and we need to start moving it. Um, Stress is, uh, it's going to happen, right? We're not going to necessarily avoid it, but having the tools to handle it seems like that's kind of the key. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many stressors out there now, environmental stresses, health stress, financial stresses that, that it's really if we remember we are nature it's not like something that we look out from the window but we do can do that but but that that's our makeup too we go through the same cycle as the the tree out in front and to know that it's like some days you know you're in a really good creative bent and so to to nourish that and some days you're not like i remember when i wasn't so healed or i don't know if it was menopause or what but you know, my boss said, I think this is one of those Renee better stay in the office kind of days. And to know that because it's not okay to like, uh, to puke for whatever your energy out all over the place in your spaces and just think like, okay, I can just now brush that away and go on with my day after I've disrupted everyone else. No, you really (laughs) got to stop and sweep that energy up, make apologies where necessary and really go backwards and, and, and start again. I, I absolutely love that you just said that. And I'm hearing so much about kind of there's an underlying tone to everything that you're saying. Um, sounds like through so many of your own studies and, and trainings of taking responsibility for yourself. So being stressed isn't an excuse. Having a bad day isn't an excuse. At the end of the day, we're responsible for the energy we bring to the room. And you're simply guiding people in ways to kind of constantly clear it so that you're not necessarily suppressing who and what you are and how you feel, but you're moving through the world in a way where you're constantly kind of dumping that cup so that it doesn't accumulate. Absolutely. And spill and over. Absolutely. <laughs> Cause just think about it. If you're on your way to work today and you're going to get there and there's people that you're going to want to spend more time with. And then there's people like, you know, you can see the black, energy coming out their office. So you're going to avoid it. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of energy do I want to put out into the world? You know, and if it's really ugly where you're working or what you're doing, then all means it's up to you to do something different. Yeah. And, and how would you recognize how would our listeners recognize if if they're in that space because i i kind of know what what i need to do with myself when i'm that kind of in that kind of space and i i have to i mean give myself a old-fashioned i'm five again you're taking a time out and for me sometimes that that looks like looks like a nap or it looks like doing a quick little bit of yoga nidra or something like that just to to reset myself but how would you one recommend that someone do a self-check to see kind of where they're at and two based on where they're at you know what what are some practical tools that they can use to actually shift their mood well first of all it this exercise you think it sounds really simple requires you to be in your body and so often most of a lot of people are not even home 
you know, they're so busy getting from point A to point B, making sure the kids get to school. You know, now that, you know, so many people are actually homeschooling. So we're spinning. And that's where the wind walk comes really in handy. And if you're, say you just get from your car to the office, you could take three really deep wind breaths in before you go in there and really connect, feel that air in your lungs feel that breath out. And, you know, you, there's this thing where you breathe in love and exhale, you know, the grief. So be, you know, when you move to a different place, whether it's going into, you know, the, from the homeschooling into your workspace, cause that's the real scenario that a lot of people are experiencing right now. Take a deep breath, take three deep breaths and really make sure that you're grounded and in your body and that requires some other things like, you know, are you starving yourself or do you make sure you drink water throughout the day? Because water is nature, too. There's just little simple things that we can do to make the stress lessen. Yeah. And, and recognizing, you know, kind of checking in, going, OK, where am I at right now? Am I am I stressed out? Am I angry? Am I sad? Am I am I just a little bit um too attached to the outcome of this project or whatever I'm doing and and then just sit for a bit and and really uh, have a call to shift that energy into into something else so how how would someone actually go about to doing that one great way is to laugh so say I you, love uh, laughing <laughs> really bad mood right I learned this trick really early. I went into, um, I, I left my, you can always pick up your grief when you're done with, with your laughter, but you know, maybe you don't have to pick it back up. So one time I learned this trick really early. I was depressed. I went in to see a movie. I laughed so hard. And when I walked back out, I'm there like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave that bag of, of, of emotions for another time because I'm just laughed. So there are so many funny memes and things like that. We have technology now too. Find a reason to have a belly laugh. I and love that. that. Everything. I absolutely love that. In fact, there, I, I discovered this new cartoon that I just absolutely love. It's called Heart and Brain. And um, I found one of these that just really connected to the way I feel like, because I was, I was a little mad at myself, actually, because I felt like, I really felt like there was one side of me that was just laying down on the projects that I needed to do and going, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. And then my brain was like saying, please stop, I have to get this done. Hmm. And, and literally this little cartoon has the brain and it says, please stop, I have to get this done. And the heart says, I'm on strike. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I felt. And, and then when I, you know, and I started laughing, about that well for what for one i'm like well okay i'm not an uncommon weirdo because obviously there's this card funny little cartoon about it but also just laughing about it and, and having the ability to laugh at myself um got me in that space of all right okay got it hearts on strike but uh, brain wants to get it done ha 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 all right let's just take action <laughs> And that's how I start my workshops because somewhere along the line, I the when I went to Peru, there was you know the the shamans were getting ready to do a despacho, which is a prayer ceremony, and they're each having a shot of rum and laughing, and I was getting madder and madder. Don't they know we're having a ceremony and this is serious? And then I thought to myself, like, spirit doesn't care if we're <laughs> if we're laughing. I actually think spirit prefers the laughter. <laughs> you know. Who wrote that you have to be all super serious? Yeah, the, the Shakespearean <laughs> element of the divine comedy, right? Exactly. Of the tra the tragic comedy and, and bringing that full circle. So Renee, for our listeners, how could they find you if they're interested in your book or anything you have to offer? What's a good way for our listeners to learn more? Uh, very simple. Go over to thepracticalshaman.com. I love and, it. Or, or the Wind Clan on Facebook. But the practical shaman.com will get you to all of those other places. Wonderful. Sorry, lovely. Well, thank you for being on the show today, Renee. It was an absolute pleasure learning about the practical uses of spirituality in the workplace to increase self management and uh, productivity. Uh, it was a pleasure. Oh, well, thank you very much, Diane and Christine. It was really wonderful to be here with you. And I was looking forward to this conversation. So, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So many gifts. This has been Business Therapy, healing businesses from the inside out through communication and emotional intelligence. I'm Diane Dye Hansen, management consultant. 
And I'm Christine Savo, licensed marriage and family therapist, certified mediator and certified hypnotherapist. Thank you so much for listening today. Have a wonderful day. Have a great day. Bye-bye. This is Business Therapy, healing businesses from the inside out through communication and emotional intelligence. I'm Diane Dye Hansen, management consultant, with me co-host Christine Salvo.